Well, what's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're roaming around SEMA. We're sitting here, we're actually currently in the Kelderman booth. You guys know we were running the Kelderman 10 to 12 inch, so they actually eight to 10 on the F450. Um, absolutely love the suspension from Kelderman. Having the adjustable air ride has been phenomenal. Uh, so we're starting out here in their booth. We're gonna be roaming around, seeing some of the cool lifted trucks, giving a little walkthroughs, talking to some of the owners and just seeing what we can get into for today. You heard it here, I don't have a mic. You heard it here first. Actually, I think I even mentioned it last year. Uh, trucks with service beds are gonna be making a huge, 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 up, huge upright in the next year. Chris, are you ready? I'm ready. Are you excited? I'm excited. Danny, ready, excited? Ready and excited. So what was your inspiration behind your truck this year? To build it practical and show style. You think you accomplished that? 100%. Now, it wouldn't be a best lifted truck at SEMA uh, video without capturing this big, beautiful truck right here. This is owned by Zach, BCC Customs. Do, do, do we have the man, the myth? Oh, no, we just got Dedek. Dedek! Talk to us about this Hello, truck. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we've got a, don't know the exact year, but I'm thinking it's like a 2021, 2022 maybe, uh, F450 here. Uh, we have the Elevate lift on this bad boy done by uh, Zach. Uh, if you see right here, we've got the JTX, uh, is that even a real microphone? Uh, uh, don't expose me, dog. Right here, these are some uh, big boys. We got them 30s, all right? I like the lugs, I like the color. I really like the color, actually. I think uh, he did made a better choice than I may have in the past, but we'll talk about that later. We got the carbon shock front and rear. Those things are awesome. We got the carbon coil. Gee, I didn't even look at that. Those things are meaty. I love them. It's like three foot of coil over there. Everything on this lift's got plates. Uh, the, uh, the, what are they called? Facial plates? Facial plates. They are fantastic. They're done right. I'm loving the matte black and then the actual gloss black behind it. Everything is done right. Everything is actually tight on this bad boy. And everything is just, you know, tasteful. Chef's kiss on this thing. Alrighty, y'all. Well, are we doing best or I don't know if we're doing best anymore at this point. We're just doing all the, some of the bigger lifted trucks. You guys know Dedek is a square body guy. So we've come over to look at this big square body in the, again, Horn Blaster Alley is kind of what this place always ends up being every year at SEMA. One of the things about SEMA is that, again, it's not a car show. A lot of people find, you know, forget that. It is a trade show. So it's not like you have the builders typically standing around their vehicles. Um, so we just kind of got to make some stuff up sometimes. Dedek, what are you seeing though, buddy? Reporting, Dedek, Dedek in the field. Listen, I'm a, I'm a fan of all square bodies. This is a little sketchy. He ain't got no rear track bar. That that gets real, real boaty going down the road on this thing. I, I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but I, I do believe this bad boy was pushed into this spot. Uh, but moving on from that. Um, no, it's actually a pretty sick truck. I like it a lot. I am not a fan of the lifted short bed single cabs. Ryan absolutely loves them. I'm not a fan of them. It looks cool, don't get me wrong. I just think, you know, the long beds you lift, the short beds you lower. But needless to say, this thing is pretty sick. Uh, I do notice something going on up here though, Dedek. Uh, there's a lot going on. Um, what, what, what you see, my dude? What'd well, it's what I don't see, Dedek. It's what I don't see. Oh, the front the front drive shaft. I I was hoping you'd make me point this out. But yes, we do have a Bluetooth drive shaft featuring in SEMA. Oh my God, those welds. Um, and I'm not talking about the wheels. Those are, I believe, JTXs as well. Um, no, these are uh, TIS. 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 The Tizzes? This is. Uh, tiz. Remember when you yelled at me for calling them Tizzes? I didn't know better. God, can I actually, like, I don't want to, like, be a dick and, like, pick at this, but, like, could I, like, talk to you and pick at this? Are you going to post it if I pick at it? I, like, I don't want to be, I don't like being that guy. We don't want to be that guy. Be, There's I, enough I, of that guy. I, on I, I can't throw stones in a glass house. I understand That's a true. lot of my stuff, but, That's dude, true. that is. Look how. There's no top frame left. Oh, they cut that out? Yeah, dude, they notched the whole thing out. Like, that right there is, like. Mm. Dude, Dedek, let's pivot, let's pivot. Like a pit, like pivot, a pivot to this beautiful cement and gray F-350 running a Kelderman kit. Looks like a, uh, some type of red powder coat, a little candy on some beautiful American force wheels with some fear nittos, nittle trail grapplers. All right, one of these 42s. Yep, 42s on 26s. I really like this truck, guys. This thing is just super clean. It's a 23. In my opinion, this is still pretty dailyable. I know a lot of people, you know, might think that's crazy, but oh well. Mm. Tedic, I noticed a bit. We've got the reverse. Uh, we got the Seymour reverse the one here. This guy. I said, thought we were pivoting into something good. And again, I guys, we so are too. making these videos to bash on people. I just noticed that there is no rear drive shaft. <laughs> <laughs> like. I like I what? And we were just talking great about it. Like what? I like this. Did and they drive it in on the front drive shaft uh, only? Ryan, uh, you know what else I see that uh, R.I.P. to our good friend uh, Zachariah uh, always used to harp on me about the way your hardware faces says a lot about how much time was put into a build. Look All at right. that lower uh, front um, control arm. Okay, okay. All the way at the bottom. Lower. Yep. yep. Look at it upper. Yep. You see how on the left side they went ahead and put you know the actual head of the bolt outward. 
it never looks good when you put the threaded side of the bolt facing out. It just, take the time, flip the bolt around. It looks so much cleaner in the end, um, especially when that's like the only one. I think that, oh, nope, nope, I lied, we got more, but that's okay, that's okay. Um, the drive shaft throws me off. <laughs> I was really not, I thought this thing was all put together. Nah, you know what happened was, they lifted it all the way up, stock drive shaft didn't fit no more. Fun fact, you do have to lengthen the drive shafts. Actually, I think you only had to lengthen the front. Well, oh my God, can we go talk about a drive shaft? You wanna go talk about drive shaft? Oh my God. Where are we going? Oh yeah, all right, get ready for oh this one, guys. God. Get ready for this one. Let's go, Dedek, we're heading that way anyway. Alrighty, y'all, this, we, we didn't even notice. We walked by this thing a few times, and then Dedek just like stopped dead in his tracks. Uh, we're talking about this Jeep, apparently a J10. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I'm just gonna let you jump into it. I mean, they built a drop cradle lift, which was like, all right, kind of cool. You know, it's yep. a little different. We are sans drive shaft, but that's, that's a common thing around here. But speaking of drive shaft, aesthetic, just, just so, come on back, buddy. Tell us what you're ever seeing. Ever since I had a stock drive shaft and the C10 actually just explode underneath the truck, mind you, I wasn't making crazy power. It scared the hell out of me. It made me actually look and realize how important, you know, proper drive shafts are. If you go ahead and get a look at this one here, um, that's, oh my God, they even tried to balance it. That is terrifying. That is, I, just, please don't do that. Just get a real drive shaft. Like, listen, I get it, it's a show. You're trying to be innovative, but like, there's so many safety concerns with that. Like, I'm scared it's gonna explode just sitting here. Your drive shaft spins so fast, and they're like designed to flex and do all these sorts of crazy things that I am not smart enough to know about. But there is not a snowball's chance in hell that they considered that with this one. I. Please, please don't do this for the sake of everyone else on the road. I like it's cool. I get what the thought process was, but like, please don't leave leave the drives drive shaft stock or get a built one properly and just polish it or something, please. We've got a real treat for you classic truck lovers here. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Me and Dedek have been walking by. Dedek has been drooling over this thing. Uh, so if there, you see any drool on there, I apologize, that was Dedek. But we have found the owner. Introduce yourself, give us a walk around of this thing. All right, so I'm Chelsea, but everyone knows me as Chelsea1225. This is my 91 Dodge W350 that I've been working on for the last four years. So if you don't remember, or some people might have known it as actually being red, um, but red actually wasn't my favorite color so we had to switch that up so I'm super excited um, I had Woodrod Customs over there in PA actually do the paint so that's been something that um, he worked really hard on completely replaced everything body wise with the exception of the hood and the tailgate that's all original we went with um, flog front and rear bumpers which the rear bumper is actually the first one that flog is offered for the old body stock um, I am still running the original Dana 60 front and Dana 70 rear. I did upgrade my steering with Yukon to 456. I am running a redhead steering gear of 18 to 1 ratio and a rebuilt intermediate shaft. Obviously with Plan B Fab, they did go with a 12 inch uh, four link coilover suspension with the crossover steering. I am heavy duty a little bit more with my 26 by 14 KG1 Forge with the 42 Nittos. Um, had to go big or go home. Got to go. have enough tire. Love it. Um, let's see. Everything inside is still interior, but I'll show you. Um, I do have a G360. That is something that a lot of people are shocked that it is manual. Nice. I do plan for future switching that to an MV5600. And then pretty much back here, I did upgrade to the new fast system. So I did delete my um, pump there. So there's something interesting. Where was this built? I I've heard the oh, story. Oh, yes. So um, for the... Con after we disassembled everything and outsourced all of the powder coating and the paint and such, we actually painted the frame and reassembled the whole thing on our 40 foot uh, gooseneck. Nice. Transported and rebuilt the whole thing. Where uh, we even had to take a skid loader, put the engine back on the 40 foot, then lift our engine jack onto the, the <laughs> gooseneck and actually install the whole thing. So, so. for people that don't know, Flog is now there's a few of these out here. One of the very few that exist in terms of flog throwing stuff on the more classic trucks. But I mean, you can't beat that fit. Like that looks beautiful. Yeah, it actually was, uh, we were obviously a little bit nervous because anything that's new, mm -hmm. it usually there's a little bit of adjustment, which is totally understandable, but this one went on perfectly. So I was very happy with it. Y'all, we got an exclusive. We got an exclusive Mr. Truck Guru himself. Hey, Mr. Truck Guru himself. What's up? What's up, hey, buddy? How are you, Ryan? Dude, we're doing good, buddy. I've seen a big presence here again this year. Uh, 64. 64 trucks with Mr. Yes, Truck Guru himself. Yes, sir. Awesome, brother. How are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm you doing good. I just, yourself? I am, man. It's been a blast. I hope next year, though, the scooter's a little more Gucci'd out. I'm going to actually buy one and then just trick it the hell out. There you go. You won't be seeing stock. 
next year. That's what I like. That's it's what I like. the first time ever you see me like this. <laughs> it's the way to go. We've all been jealous since day one. I saw you pull up in this thing. Bro, $175 for five days. They drop it off and pick it up. I don't know why everybody's not on a scooter. Look at look at these guys are mad at themselves for not doing it. Let's get a scooter gang, bro. Oh, uh, next year. deal, deal. Caravan them. We're in. I'm down. I'm We're down. in. I'm absolutely. Let's do it. Yep. Absolutely. We're in. Alrighty. Now, when it comes to like the custom fabrication this stuff, like you know, obviously I'm not a fabricator. What I am though is a stickler for details, and I love details like you saw on the spitz lift crane i mean we took a standard extruded aluminum crane and we totally gucci that thing out with powder coat and pinstripe and all that well check this out guys this like speaks to me this is really this is rhino right here and that is this truck we've got a beautiful gmc dually everything powder coated nice and like this candy red obviously the truck being gm's silver i don't know the exact gm color code don't you know don't get mad at me about that but look at all the way down to the tis forge wheels the uh the drop lift here what, what do we got here we got like a two two drop cradles going oh on here? he's got a front and a rear huh. independence are these two different companies and with maybe just linked up bars obviously the front is fts the uh, fts kits are not my favorite because of the giant drop down front bracket it just looks like a big brick wall uh, for whatever reason i've never liked these i know to go this tall on ifs trucks you kind of have to do a drop cradle the reason i like bulletproof drop cradles is because it's just tubular bar and it's not this big flat wall in front of you uh, but it's a beautiful truck aside from you know just my personal preference there but if we work our way back check out you should the get trailer that dog clean stock drive shaft or rebuild you like the drive shaft i like drive all right drive shaft. a fan of the drive shaft so come bend back the trailer looks like it was done in some bed liner maybe painted over top of the bed liner to match the gm factory silver but if we work our way back they uh looks like they burned the deck which is a nice touch nice touch we got the matching harley on the back beautiful coming down all of the details on the trailer are powder coated to match the details on the truck uh we've got matching tis wheels we've even got an aggressive uh off-road tire as opposed to a standard trailer tire and then coming all the way back with the matching uh polaris we also have the matching ramps i mean these are the details guys that i really do like this thing is phenomenal look at this one thing i didn't even notice we've got onboard air on the trailer that ties off of the onboard air on the truck look at that that's pretty cool Dedic. Then oh. sniff out where the air where the airlines go. We're running airlines off the truck. Okay, and then we got one that goes there. We got a controller right here. I want to touch. I want to touch. Is the trailer on air ride? Yes, it is. It's, oh. Yes, it is. Okay, we got an air ride trailer. I don't know how I missed that when we were looking at the wheels. That's kind of hard that. to see because he's aired down right now. Look I was kind of wondering about that clearance. That's pretty cool. Huh. Yeah, right. I was kind of wondering about this clearance he had going on here and how he was pulling that off, but uh, uh, makes sense that, now. That, that's lack of clearance. Exactly. Now, taking a look at this other IFS truck, this is a Vice Customs lift kit, but look at how they left some air to breathe in this drop cradle in the front. To me, that looks a little bit better. It's a little more open. Again, I know it's all personal preference, but I like not seeing just a flat face of steel on your, your whole drop cradle. Danik, what about white lightning over here, buddy? Uh, listen, so this is top three for me favorite body styles for the c10 series and square body series i'm a sucker for the og irox the super swampers these things are sick uh what are we on some some uh i can't see it 20s these, these things shine way too bright some gear forged don't never heard of them gear forged wheels i get it this is built as a show truck to be a show vehicle that's why i'm okay with this but if you know what i'm saying this is this don't don't get me wrong like they did a fantastic job there's, a, off there's a lot of billet right there they a lot did, of billet if if this show if this truck was built to show off billet they did a fantastic job and knocked it out of the park besides that i think it might be a little too much but like i said these are purpose-built vehicles for a reason this one's a show truck and as long as it's to show off all this billet work and they crushed it and killed it got a little pinstriping on the door right here look got at even the look up. at even the details there's a little diamond plate going on in the uh chevy badge there that, that's sick and oh my god i am a sucker for the bedside roll or the in-bed roll bars those things are great i love them they look nostalgic they look cool um this thing is done awesome it's there's a lot of time and money in this thing for sure all right y'all so we're with like one of the new up and comers over here in the lift kit world you guys remember him from last year uh he kind of killed the six by six game that's the, we're, we're done yeah. we killed it we yeah. won we won right we now what are we moving on to now we're moving into production right, right? right. so we right. got our marketing in uh we're trying to just push like these bolt-on lifts pretty much there you go um, this is the last one we've actually finished developing this is for a 23 ford obviously we have pretty much the same identical kit for older gens and stuff like that and when he says just finished developing this man drove cross-country showed up a couple days late because he was still working on getting this thing all nice 
guys have put together. Like that's a huge thing for us. You know, we want to make sure that people know that we're like constantly a work in progress. You know, everything that we try to make, we try to make sure that it comes out the best that we could possibly make it. Um, as we develop these things, we want the best result for the customer. So obviously, we're learning as we go. So we do like this development pricing. You know, so we'll build these kits. There's actually like four trucks here that are all development priced, pretty much. Basically, customer comes in, we give them a kick-ass deal, and we work together through the quirks and stuff. And we work with a couple shops because install is also very important. We want shops to be able to install them and things that they find that's very difficult or annoying to do we can work out together you know what i mean technically the more annoying shops are the best shops because <laughs> that would allow for a better product in the end you right know what I mean? so tell us what we're looking let's start up front let's start up front on this big beautiful 23 f250 this thing is massive brother so we got a 23 f250 this is what we call a 20 inch lift um obviously every lift of this style is going to start with that center cradle section four link bars front and rear these are coilovers. We absolutely love this brand, um, Carbon. They are actually made in the USA from top to bottom, dude. These are machine caps, stainless steel body, stainless steel reservoirs. These are 3 coil coilovers, um, some nice springs. We actually do the math to try to get the spring rate as best as possible. That's like a whole other thing we're trying to make sure that we get dialed in. Um, truck's gonna come with front sway bar with our billet clamps, um, full Heim high steer. Obviously, you'll see a high steer knuckle on this side, Heim steering. We're missing our dual steering stabilizer, but you can obviously see the provisions for it. Um, this truss is bolt-on, so it'll bolt on to your factory coal spring location. Squeeze in the truss. Um, you get your track bar bracket. Try to keep geometry the best as possible between these two. Um, and then we can work our way out back. I'm sorry if I talk a little bit fast. The main thing here is for people to be happy, you know what I mean, and to have a good product and drivability. We don't really build show truck style lifts, we build street truck style lifts. Now they happen to be a little more showy, is what we're really after. We're after the guy that wants a nice show piece, but still drives to the meet every week. I'll take you all on the way back, you know. Um, same coilover spring setups we were talking about. You're gonna see your center cradle. We try to put layovers on everything. You got a layover here, a layover inside. If you go underneath, you see the cross member, that's got another layover as well. Just kind of those little, quote unquote, FU statements um, <laughs> to the thing. You'll see like everything is a work in progress. You'll see that there's a drive shaft spacer right now. We needed to get the right height so we can get the correct angle on the pinion, order the correct drive shaft at the right slip yoke. We try to do as much math as possible on the computer, but there's certain things that until reality doesn't hit, you can't dial right in. I've set up in the rear, full bolt on, like rear cross member that will allow you to convert the rear to a four link rear. Um, same setup in the rear. You got a pullover with a remote resi and a remote shock. The rear truss is also bolt on. Yeah, I know. Um, obviously, you know that leaf springs would normally be here in this position. This is our bolt-on truss. We'll sit in the stock spring perch, and then these baskets will come and bolt in, and this will serve for your track bar bracket and your four-link bars. And just to give it to perspective, you are a tall gentleman. 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six, four. Look at that. <laughs> this would be the lowest setting on this lift. Gotcha. Now, where can we find these? Find these on our website actually as of next week, so I don't know when you're posting this video, but probably by the time you post, nah, you'll post quick. So by the time you post it, it'll be there, so maybe you can check the link below, Ryan will put that in there. There you go. Um, we do still offer really good pricing. We can give Ryan a promo code, I think we should do that. Okay. Um, so I'll come up with something cute, he'll put it in the link. So make sure if you type that in, we'll give you guys 20% off, which is what we're running at SEMO pretty much. You know what I mean? It's a pretty fat deal. Yeah, and I, he'll throw in a shirt. He'll throw in a shirt. <laughs> so. A poppy shirt. <laughs> we're gonna catch her off guard. Is that Shannon Mora? Is that Shannon Mora? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Shannon, give us a walk around your truck real quick. Okay. I have my boost bars, grill, how to put elevated into it. Uh, we got the flog bumpers, rigid lights. My headlights are Sergio. I'm not gonna try to say his last name because I'm gonna butcher it. But um, Sergio out of Denver did my headlights. They're Morimoto. I got the new JTX, I'm gonna butcher it, archetype. You got Archetype. it. Archetype. You I said got it. Right, it. Didn't yeah. I? You got it. <laughs> uh, they're 26 by 14s, and I have the Fury MT1 37R26, something like that. <laughs> 14 fives. We there got you go. it. There we got it, Jen. You're doing remember. great. You're doing great. That's why um, I caught you off guard. You did. You ran over here. Um, I did an 8 inch wicked lift. I have all the powder coating done by Lacey Blair and BCC Zach. I have my next level mats that are gorgeous. I stole all the design from your work for it towel. With permission, don't try and do it without permission. Yeah, you guys can't have these, these are just for me. Autofilm Solutions out of Colorado Springs and my decals. My girl, Cassidy did some custom pinstriping on my truck. She put my truck's name right here. Why do you do that? Why are you so close? They don't need to see up my nose. I, oh. 
What? My my work for it hitch covers inside so no one stole it. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's inside. Somebody have, steals it at the show. I'll give you a hundred bucks. Yep. No, that's, a picture that's rude. She spent way more than that powder coating it. For real. <laughs> um, we have the custom elevated for the flog bumper. Beautiful. My TSO tip. Um, inside I did my seats. I have road wire interior and seatbelt planet for the seat belts to match beautiful sir don't touch the truck sir sir don't touch the truck sorry sir sorry. back up please sir don't touch sir <laughs> sir close the door he's not gonna fit back there i oh, think there's no hitch in oh yeah, yeah. yeah uh, there's uh, a hitch uh, there. Uh, oh oh <laughs> oh he's going for it he's going for it uh shannon what motivated you to get into the trucking game uh, a little louder for the people in the back please d-max rhino d-max rhino all right uh if you had uh, any uh, words of inspiration for the people uh what would that be if you want anything in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. Wow, real original. Jesus. <laughs> now it is a well-known fact that Dedek is a square body fan, and this one, this one even speaks to me. This is an absolutely beautiful square body. Check this thing out. So it is a short bed dually. What are you thinking, buddy? It's on a hybrid air and coilover system. So I guess Carbon is doing, this was an exclusive King Shock thing at one point. Looks like Carbon Shock says now, uh, I guess made their version of it, but at one point King actually had an air, a coilover with a built-in airbag uh, that they had patented. So this must just be some type of version that Carbon was allowed to uh, actually build or the patent is up, I don't know. So it just kind of takes a little bit of a springiness out of yeah, the coils. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, no, I think uh, without Zerg tank, this thing probably rides really well. Um, the cradle lift on it is actually pretty simple. Um, you don't need to get over too complicated with these things. Uh, this one's done very clean. I like it a lot, honestly. Uh, I think, Ryan, we need to do something like this next year. What do you think, buddy? Yeah, I really like the cradle lift. Uh, normally, like you see all the big, flashy, boxed-in uh, arms instead of tubular. But on this truck, being old school, the tubular just keeps it super clean. I don't think it needs the big box arms. I think the fact that it doesn't have them actually makes this truck stand out even more because of the cleanliness when you look up underneath it. Some of these, which we'll show you guys at some point, uh, they went too wild showing off their fabrication skills when it comes to building <laughs> these arms. And uh, yeah, I think they this I would own this truck in a heartbeat. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Another thing I'll give them is we kind of discussed it earlier. Um, this isn't too crazy high of a lift and with something you're not doing too crazy high i kind of like the look of a single arm radius arm coming off the bottom uh they still did the parallel bars one on top one on bottom and it still looks clean it looks looks like it's done right and it's it's in my eyes it's kind of hard to make that look clean and good and they pulled it off here for sure it's a very nice truck i like it a lot so for one thing um there is not a lot of like cool aftermarket bumpers uh this one don't know what it is might be i'm hoping it's custom built because this thing is awesome i like this thing a lot another thing uh is we got oh we got, sound system. There, got, a, got, a, there? got a sound system in the rear of the truck also we've got our air tank back there and a bar that goes across to mount your uh speakers but another thing i want to talk about is i am also not a fan of the bed liner under the truck i feel like that is normally kind of like, a, eh, let's just throw something on there and kind of hide some things. But this is actually like tasteful. I like it. This color scheme is really, really nice. I love the way these two colors, even for someone colorblind as myself, like contrast and work so well. Well, and you'll notice the guys that use the bed liner to hide the imperfections underneath the truck use the really gritty, almost rhino liner or worse. However, this looks like a, a Linex product. It is very, yeah. it's a very finer grit, which means that uh, the truck was in good shape before they bed lined it. They're not just trying to hide something. That was just a clean way of cleaning up underneath. Yeah, no. This thing turned out actually phenomenal. This is, I wasn't actually a fan of this thing when we just walked by, but now I'm looking up closer at it. I really like this thing a lot. Dedek's not a fan of uh, short beds being lifted. He thinks they should be lowered. Yep. I absolutely love this truck. Yep. Okay, guys, we have stumbled across the world famous Miss Lacey world Blair. World famous? Look at this yeah. big, beautiful rig. You are like stepping the game up every year. I'm trying. We're going bigger. Give us a walk around of this beautiful truck here, Lacey. All what do right. we got? So it is sitting on a massive 18 inch Elevate lift kit. Um, powder coated by me, of course, and I don't know if you notice, this is my very first frame off build. So we've got a powder coated frame under here. So what I really wanted to go with this build is the suspension and the body. So we'll start with that. I skipped a very important part. It is wrapped by Atlanta Custom Wraps with the Dolph Tribute wrap. Number 77. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. So I've been wanting a truck wrapped with the Dolph Camo for a long, long time. This one just felt right, so this is how we're doing it. I wanted it to really blend with the body of the truck and the wheels be the main pop. So 
as you can see here, got some pretty loud 28 by 16 JTX Forge wrapped in 44 inch Interco boggers. And I think these things are brighter in person. What do you think? They are. That's the one thing about these trucks. Number one, the height is never like you can't. You can't gauge it by videos, and then the colors never look as good as they do in person. These things yeah. are very bright. I like how you muted everything, though, yeah, to tie in with the camera the wraps. Yeah, Zach and the guys were like, you need to do the suspension bright orange, like it'll make it pop, but I'm like, just want everything to be super clean, and then the wheels, the well, pop. And then we all know how much you change wheel colors. Yeah, So exactly. now you can infinitely change them, and you're not tied into the rest right, of the vehicle. Right, exactly. So tell me about Elevate lift kits, because this is the first year I've seen them all, but you guys are kind of like bringing them out, right? Yes. Yeah, so we have done them on quite a few customer builds and they drive so good and I mean I've always kind of wanted one like I mean they're pretty pricey so I'm just thankful to be like here representing them today and doing the damn thing you know where that's one if you're going big spend the money yeah exactly for sure because like Zach's lifted dually when you're sitting in it and driving it, it doesn't even feel like it's lifted like it drives better than like the six inch kit I had on this I'm not gonna lie well I was gonna say don't tell anybody that but here we are but it just does <laughs> nobody watches yeah. you're good <laughs> You're good. Of course, I think I'm going to have a little bit of the bogger bounce, but I won't be curbing wheels with those things. There you so go. We're changing the, the game. Thing. We're changing the game. Yeah. So we've got fusion bumpers front and rear um, with equipped with rigid industries lights, um, re-geared with Yukon 488s because we definitely need that to push the massive tires. Right. Shifted industry spacers. We've got some... Those Big are some pretty, daddy. some pretty beefy spacers. Yeah, some pretty beefy spacers. What are those? Three there. inch, four inch? Four inch. Jeez. Yeah, I just got this a couple days ago. Bulletproof hitch. There you go. Yeah. They nice. Just came by and set us up with this thing. This wrap is super cool because it's all like hand laid and cut with the knifeless tape. So that's what they do there at Atlanta Custom Wraps. And then it was ceramic coated by SS Paint Correction, and they did all that there. So I'm excited. Like, I don't know. I love this wrap. They're wrapping all my vehicles from now on. Okay guys, we've stopped by our friends over at Gen Y. We've got Rachel, our new friend Rachel. Rachel's gonna talk over some new stuff that they got going on. Go ahead, take it away. What's up guys, great to be with you today. Uh, here we have the all new Gen Y Snap Latch. Uh, safest coupler on the market so this is our new gooseneck version and basically uh, whenever you drop this on the ball so right now it's in the open position and it, you can be up to an inch and a half actually away from your ball drop it on and it's gonna slide right in and snap in place awesome. Once that's latched it cannot come undone so you can literally lock a ball in there um, with like a padlock in the back lock a ball and you've got your gooseneck cover locked up and over here we have the bumper pull version um, this one's coming out spring 2024 same concept a uh, little bit of a different lever here but yeah pull the ball out okay pop it back in feel that snap nice latches in real nice so spring 2024 do we have a price point well, uh, so this is more of an attachment. We don't have a price point on this yet. Okay. And this is actually just going to be a part of our Generation 3 gooseneck couplers. So um, we've got the gooseneck hitches. This one's chopped off right now as a display. And then the fifth wheel, the gooseneck, um, on the other side will also be featuring the new snap latch. All right, y'all. So something just to break this video up, but this thing is absolutely phenomenal. This is a Toyota Land Cruiser converted into a basically a truggy but underneath hopefully you can see on that mirror right there there is an actual track like a snowmobile track should you high center this thing i'm assuming it's got to be what an electric power sure. something like that so if you get stuck in the center that track will spin and actually dislodge you i don't know never seen anything like that before that's that's pretty impressive that, that's pretty cool uh i mean i guess it is a problem vehicles do high center while they're out there rock crawling we don't typically do this however chad said hi to us <laughs> and we value that a lot. <laughs> Chad, give us a walk around of your truck, buddy. All right, so this is the 2020 Duramax, and I bought it back in November of last year. Planned on doing a leveling kit on it, and ended up turning into this. So ended up ordering a four-inch Elite Cognito lift, and we have pretty much powder-coated everything. All the differentials are powder-coated in chrome. Spindles are chrome, stripped the whole chassis down, painted the chassis, color matched everything. So you did a full frame off. We didn't pull the cab. Okay. So we uh, pretty much scraped everything, got into all the nooks and crannies that we can get into and painted everything around it. And we pulled the bed off and painted all underneath the bed and stuff like that. How fun was it getting all the undercoating off? It was awful. <laughs> Sat underneath there with uh, 
torches and putty knives and um, just kind of cleaned it down and pulled the frame the bed off painted all underneath that and it turned into a dream and it's it's a blessing to be here and i'm so thankful to be in the position to be able to do this i mean the the, the powder coating looks beautiful the paint work i think you did a really clean job thank you is that uh did you polish the exhaust or the exhaust is polished okay okay i like that i like that even the knuckles are polished. And we got four wet sound Rev 10s in the bed. Look at that. He even pulled off the uh, gooseneck hitch and had that powder coated. Yeah. So one of the things I think we're going to notice a change when it comes to Seaman, I think Seaman needs this change, is we need more practical trucks here. Like the big gaudy show truck stuff is cool, but uh, I think the more practical is what we're going to start seeing over the next couple of years. Uh, yeah. we, we, so we... this truck was intended to be my tow vehicle for another one of my trucks. Okay. And um, that's why I went with the four inch lift. I still wanted to be able to pull a trailer, pull my gooseneck and not have to use a ladder to climb into the bed. There you go. And so it's, it's turned into this and I am so thankful and blessed to be here and have this opportunity. And, be able to do stuff like this there you go there so you go first year at SEMA first year at SEMA I came here 21 just to view it and I told myself I'm gonna build a truck one year and it, it just happened to be within two years and so, so you look young Chad how old are you I am 24 years old what do you do I'm a glazer so I install windows and stuff blue collar that's what you see everywhere around here we build all the chick-fil-a's all the raising canes 24-hour fitnesses out in California so if I need like a steel building with a sweet glass facade you got me we can do that. Done. Sold. You heard it here. You heard it here. Sponsor me. Alrighty, y'all. So I know we didn't hit on all of the trucks. We probably didn't even hit on the craziest trucks, but we just walked around and kind of talked about ones that grabbed our eyes, whether that be good and or bad. Here, Daddy, let me let me give you a little mic, Daddy. We didn't even go see the vehicle that was my favorite of SEMA. We, we were supposed to do a whole lowered vehicles of SEMA, which is uh, more Daddy's world than my world. There but, was a C10 out front that literally had more hours in it than anything else I've seen around in this entire convention of SEMA. Next year, Daddy, we got to work harder. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you uh, 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 do not miss on some, 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 some work for apparel.com. Then it gets been. <laughs> you're slacking. It's rough, dog. It's, like, it's rough. There's a lot we're, of days. We're doing scooters next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Bye. Damn.